And if you want further details, I'll provide them. But there's other stuff going on out there. What a way in. I want to go back to the unemployment uh, numbers that came out Thursday and Friday. As you know, the unemployment number went up to 8.3%. The Bureau of Labor Statistics said that 163,000 new jobs were created. We used BLS numbers ourselves to show you how this isn't true. We talked about seasonal adjustment. But in a random act of journalism, a stunning random act of journalism, the Washington Post... Yesterday, in the Sunday paper, actually wrote, this, and they had, this was the headline. Wait, the U.S. economy actually lost 1.2 million jobs in July? The U.S. economy did lose 1.2 million jobs between June and July, but that's not how it got reported. When the Bureau of Labor Statistics releases job figures for July, said the economy gained 163,000 jobs. So what gives? Well, they're not hiding anything, as we pointed out last week. The discrepancy has to do with what's known as seasonal adjustments. Now, you who are regular listeners are well aware of the seasonal adjustments in January and July being the two months traditionally, where the BLS says the most jobs have been lost. But it's a guess. It's a wild guess. Even John Crudell, writing in the New York Post, said, you know, up till now, you know, I I knew the numbers were fudged. I mean, up till now, I knew they were playing games with the numbers. But not until last week's report did Crudell think that we're being lied to about it all. For political purposes. That's how egregious this report was the u.s economy follows certain predictable patterns in hiring and layoffs every year school districts always let workers go for the summer and they hire them in the fall retailers always staff up for the christmas holidays and lay people off in january students always flood the labor market in june so if we want to know how well the economy is doing and we want to know how many jobs were added after Taking these predictable fluctuations into account, some seasonal adjustments are necessary. Anyway, cut through all the the gobbledygook here. And what you're left with is the guy, name is Brad, Brad Plummer, says over the longer term, these fluctuations shouldn't matter much. Inaccurate seasonal adjustments might make some job reports look unduly pessimistic and others unduly optimistic, but they cannot mask... They cannot mask the overall health of the economy for too long. Eventually, the jobs reports balance out. So look at the long-term trends. For the past one and a half years, the U.S. economy has added about 152,000 jobs per month on average. Now stick with me on this, because at the rate, and this was in the Washington Post on Sunday. It was in other places, too. The Washington Post, at our current rate of adding jobs, we will not get back to full employment until 2025 at this pace. That's Obama's summer of recovery, which was three years ago. And then last year, they didn't talk about it being the case this year. But see, see right there, ESPN's on, they're showing the hit against the quarterback, and they're asking, is this the kind of hit that the Saints would have been penalized for under the bounty program. It was a legal hit. The quarterback is taken out. They're asking anybody on the Saints paid for this hit. I guarantee, folks, I know what I'm talking about here. And I'm going to be the only one that believes it until it happens. And then everybody will forget that I was the first making the prediction. Well, Rush, where have you been on this? Well, yeah, I forgot. I was only the first. Anyway, 2020. This is awful, folks. This is literally awful. We won't get back to where we started in 2009 when Obama took office. We won't, well, we won't get back to where we were before he took office. Let's say 2008, 2007 until 2025 at this rate. And this rate's not going to be maintained. It's going to get worse. That's the really sad thing. Even the New York Times, they had a random act of journalism on Friday on their blog post, on their website. They even said these seasonal adjustments are wrong more than they're right. That they've been wrong 62% of the time. 
we would have to add 280,000 jobs in each of the next three months for the unemployment rate to get below 8%. Uh, which, by the way, the regime, from what I gather, was actually hoping that that would happen. They actually were hoping. The number is 7.2%. No incumbent president ever been reelected with an unemployment higher than 7.2%. What they needed was this number to get down to 7.9. Once it gets to 7, then the 0.9, 0.8 wouldn't matter. They would just report the rate of 7%. But now they know uh, that there's, we lost 1.2 million jobs in July. We did not add 163,000. At the rate we are, that's the net. There might have been 163,000 jobs filled, but that didn't end the story. And I only mention this because, like like I said on Friday, these, these numbers represent real people. Real people and their lives. Real people. This is, this is not a game. It, it, it's all reported on and, and talked about, analyzed. In American politics, particularly Washington, is, is this a game? Is, how does this help Obama? How does this help Romney? How does it hurt Obama? How does it hurt Romney? What is this going to say for Obama's re-election? What about the real people being affected here? If it were a Republican president, we'd have a never-ending trail of damaged lives. People whose lives have been destroyed by the Republican economic policies. Now it's just uh, it's just a game, just a game. Uh, it's sad because it isn't a game; it is real lives. They have one point two million jobs. That's just a statistic. It's nothing more than a statistic. The individual tragedies behind that one point two million never told, never humanized. Just, gee, in news that is not pleasing to the Obama administration, which was hoping for a better report, blah, 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 blah. Listen to the Washington Post also on Sunday. They did a random act of journalism on the unemployment numbers, but they canceled it out with their story on Harry Reid. Listen to this. Listen to the way they start their story on Harry Reid's lie about Mitt Romney not paying taxes. Republicans on Sunday escalated their attacks on Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Really? That's what's happening out there? Republicans escalated their attacks on Harry Reid? Harry Reid started all of this. In fact, we got to go to the... uh, audio sound bites and there's one in particular that I want to get to and that's number where is it number 14 grab audio sound bite 14 this is our old buddy Jonathan Carl Jonathan Carl used to be at CNN where when he was there I might be doing career damage to the poor guy when I say this when he was at CNN and Snurdly will remember this Jonathan Carl was if he if he leaned in any direction it was to the right Now he's with ABC. No, Brian Ross still hasn't told us who the guy was that that, that shot up the church in Wisconsin Sunday. And I I, I know they're saying that he's a white supremacist that's the Southern Poverty Law Center, but until Brian Ross weighs in, folks, we won't know who this guy really is. We're waiting for Brian Ross to discover whether or not there's a Tea Party member, for example, with the same name in Wisconsin. So don't jump the gun on this yet. Brian Ross and Stephanopoulos haven't weighed in. This is during the roundtable yesterday. The same roundtable where George Will was talking about how football is killing its players and it can't be fixed. Jonathan Carl talking to Stephanopoulos about Harry Reid's remarks about Romney and not having paid taxes. Stephanopoulos says, you've been covering Harry Reid an awful long time, Jonathan. What do you make of how he's doubling and tripling down on this charge without releasing any evidence? Folks, here's the whole thing. 
This answer, in a nutshell, is the whole story. Number 14, audio that I've ever seen actually made on the Senate floor. Mitt Romney paid $3 million to the IRS in the one tax return that we've seen so far. He paid taxes. It's a completely false charge. But Reid loves it. The Democrats love this because no matter how much he, he digs in, no matter how much he gets attacked, uh, you know, here or by Jon Stewart or, or anywhere else, it gets the story out there again and again. And I'll tell you, Romney played into it by telling Harry Reid to put up or shut up. And then it becomes this back and forth. Instead, he should have laughed it off. He should have made a joke about Harry Reid's imaginary friend and moved on. Now, let me put this in perspective. Here's a reporter who knows it's bogus. A tantamount admission here. The, the Jonathan Carl knows this is bogus. Yet instead of reporting that, the game, Harry Reid's actually pulling this off. Why, every time he doubles or triples down, it keeps the story out there. And then the way Romney responds to it, that keeps the story out there. And we know what Romney ought to be doing is, is just laughing it off and so well, we can argue about that. But the point is the media knows that there's nothing to it. And yet they're reporting it as though there might be because they want there to be. They want the thing to work. They want the tactic to work. So the truth is irrelevant. The fact that nobody has any evidence that Romney hasn't paid t- that doesn't matter. I, I'll tell you, folks, I remember uh, throughout my entire sterling 24-year broadcast career, as you well know, I have come under attack and under assault countless times. And I've had to, you can't let that stand. you got to respond to it. And I respond to it, and it just, it just prolongs and, and elevates the story. And people, you shouldn't have responded to it. See what you did? Now they're just talking about it even more. You can't win. Everybody who asks, well, why don't the Republicans say that? Why don't they fight back? Why don't the Republicans? Well, when they do, guess what? The media says, see, guilty. Wait a minute, you know there's nothing to the charge. Doesn't matter, he's acting guilty. He deigned to react. So you react to the charge, that must mean, now that the meme is, he must have something to hide, he won't release them. This couldn't happen without a media that's chosen sides. This couldn't happen without a corrupt media. Pure and simple. Now you can debate all day strategically how to react when something like this happens. Frankly, it is predictable. This is a page right out of the Democrat playbook. I mean, I've given you all the examples. George Bush, secret meeting in Paris, 1980 with the Iranians. No evidence. And precisely because there was no evidence of the seriousness of the charge, Tom Foley, Speaker of the House, had to investigate. An investigation was called for. There will be an investigation called for here. Now, wait, I've got a lot of other sound bites coming. Carl was at the trail end of what we have here. You've got all these other people. Hey, what's he hiding? Why doesn't he just release them? Media knows there's nothing to The media knows that Harry Reid's lying through his teeth, and yet they're reporting how impressed they are with the tactic. Impressed with the technique. And here you have it, Washington Post yesterday. Republicans on Sunday escalated their attacks on Harry Reid. Republicans aren't attacking anybody. They are reacting. They are attempting here to deflect, you might want to say they're being defended. Debbie Blabbermouth Schultz is out there now demanding that Romney turn over 23 years tax returns. All but one year of the Rush Limbaugh show. Debbie Blabbermouth Schultz wants Romney to release all but one year of his tax returns during the history of this program. 23 years. Here's a question for Dingy Harry. As majority leader, he has paid $193,000 a year. How did he get to be worth $10 million? Gotta go. Be right back.